Hey everybody, what's going on? Space Cowboy here. Welcome to the Spacecast, my own little podcast that I will be doing on a weekly uh, basis, sometimes a bi-weekly basis. It's basically going to be reserved for things that I can't talk about in 10 to 20 minutes. So with that, it's going to be a myriad of topics. So today, as you can see, we're going to be going over the NFC East and more particularly how I feel the division is right now. We'll go through each of the team from worst to best from last year um, and just overall my thoughts and opinions. So again, this will just be a straight through thing. There's no editing. It's just going to be straight up recording. So sit back, relax. Uh, there will be timestamps down below in case you have issues with, you know, going to particular teams and stuff like that, or you don't care about one team and you just want to listen to me talk about another. So if you want to hear my input on the Cowboys, that'll be at the end. Um, if you're a fan of any of the other teams, by all means, jump to your teams, and I will give my thoughts and opinions there. So make sure to like, subscribe for more, and hit the notification bell. And without further ado, let's get started with this discussion. So, New York. Um, New York last year was a dumpster fire, to say the least. And it's primarily because... That, that entire organization needed to be cleaned out from the top to bottom. The front office itself is trash. And, you know, with Dave Gettleman, you know, he's been, in my opinion, the biggest reason why the Giants have not been very well. I mean, the drafting has been, like, crap, if I'm going to be honest with you. Um, it feels like that they just jumbled around they weren't even trying to build a team it's just they got they were stuck in neutral ever since that 2016 team that the giants had they haven't been good since you know think about it. you went 11 and 5 and you've not like they've had the worst record in football i believe since that span of time and so the giants are what's crazy is like the giants are worse than the browns and you know that was during that period of time now you kind of go through that entire season. There was a couple things that hurt the Giants. Bad quarterback play. The roster itself just, you know, you didn't really get anything out of Kenny Galladay, who I thought would help the situation, but of course it didn't. Um, but let's just be honest here. Like, if you don't have your quarterback, you're really not going anywhere, and you're not really much of a threat. So if I'm a Giants fan, I'm kind of looking at, you know, your quarterback situation. You're saying, okay, Daniel Jones is he the guy, and to me, he is not. He, you know, he's a bust. Um, I thought he might have had something that first year, but he has not been good ever since. I mean, you look at his stats, and the stats don't tell the whole story. I mean... You look at that rookie year, and you re it really did look like the Giants had their next guy. And, I mean, there was one game. I think he threw a five-touchdown game versus Washington, and I was like, huh, okay. But then, these past two years, he's just been terrible. He hasn't looked anything worth being a franchise quarterback, and that sucks because that can really set back your fran— you know, that sets you back a while. I mean, you look— at that 2019 draft class and you're kind of like huh okay so what could have the giants have done and you know at that sixth spot i was really thinking they could have gone for a josh allen maybe um quarterback wise i mean you did have kyler murray at the top but there really wasn't anybody else of note at that point in time so you kind of were screwed and i and it just didn't feel like the giants needed to get a quarterback but I digress. That's kind of my focal point, is that it just felt like that team was just terrible. They had some good pieces there, right? You know, when you look at what they have um, offensive line-wise, I like Andrew Thomas. I think that he can, if he can continue to develop, he might be solid. Or, be, you know what I mean? Um, their wide receiving core, I like what they constructed. Um, and, I mean, outside of that, they... They kind of just need a hard rebuild. And so you got rid of the head coach. You basically got rid of everybody, right? You got rid of everybody. The Giants cleaned house not only with the front office, but also 
with their coaching staff. They got rid of a lot of positions. They got rid of everybody. And that's good because you need to get rid of that. They brought in a guy that I really like in Brian Dable, and they brought in Mike Kafka as their offensive coordinator, who I really would have loved um, to see in Dallas um, if they wanted to move on from uh, – which I'm gonna call it, uh, Kellen Moore, but hey, you know what? You can't get what you want. <laughs> so, um, there's that. The Giants, I think, constructed a really good coaching staff, and it's just a matter of what your new general manager can do. So, you look at what they did in free agency. Um, nothing too big to really give a damn about, you know. Um, so I'm not really that much to give you know to care it, it just kind of feels like okay you you kind of just add it a little bit right um but then you go into the draft and i think that of course the draft is the biggest thing that people look at you know those first two picks that trade with chicago was genius you know you trade down you get an extra first and lo and behold you get the seventh overall pick and that helps you get evan neal the offensive tackle out of Alabama, and I think they hit a home run with the first two picks. Now, after the rest of that, you know, when you look at the rest of the draft, it's kind of like, okay, I mean, the only other player that I really like is um, Daniel Bellinger out of San Diego State, and Micah McFadden, that was another guy, but I, I, nothing really speaks volumes here, and again, like, you're not going to hit on every pick, and I'm not going to act like I'm an expert on the Giants, because I'm not. However, I think the Giants are going in the right direction. I think that you'd be lying to yourself if you said that they weren't. What I think they need to worry about is just keep adding pieces to this roster. You look at the team itself. Uh, I'm not talking about like the um the coaching staff. You got um, Aziz Ojolari, who I really like. I think he's a great player for them. You know, you're bringing in a Kevon Thibodeau. And then you're looking at the rest of this roster. And I, for me, I think that the Giants are right now a 4-6 to six win team. I would say anything better than four wins is something that you can pat yourself on the back. The Giants are in a soft, not a soft, a hard rebuild. So I think that if you can get anything out of this year, it would be that you kind of are building a competent football program. Also, you know, Saquon Barkley, he, you know, unfortunately he's not been that asset that you're hoping he could have been, which, you know, it's just been injuries and stuff like that. But to kind of wrap up the New York Giants, I think that they're a team that looks like a four to six win team. They're not ready to contend. Um, they're not ready for a playoff push. However, if you can get good quarterback play, this team can be solid, maybe. But Daniel Jones has not proven over the last two years that he's been that. He's actually regressed. So, yeah, so I think the Giants, you know, you kind of had to look at their schedule and you say to yourself, okay, well, what exactly can you get out of the season? I mean, the, the NFC East has a really favorable schedule. I mean, you look at the Giants, right? Um, they play the Titans in Tennessee. I would give that a win for Tennessee. They play the Panthers. I think the Panthers will beat them. Then they play the Cowboys. I'm going to give the Cowboys the win there. They play Chicago. Um, I feel... I think they'll beat Chicago, possibly. They won't beat the Packers in Lambeau. They won't beat the Ravens. Um, at this point, I would see them. I could see them beating Jacksonville. I can see them beating Seattle. I could see them beating the Texans <clears throat> and the uh, and the Lions as well. They'll probably lose to Dallas uh, again, so they'll get swept. Um. I think they'll, I think they'll at least um, beat Washington once. I have a weird feeling they will. They'll lose the Philly both times because Philly has not proven to me that they can 
or excuse me, the Giants haven't proven that they could beat Philly on a consistent basis. I mean, they've just been owned by them for a long time. Um, and then I think they'll lose to the Colts and the, well, the Vikings, then the Colts. Um, so that puts them at a six and eleven record. I think that that if the Giants were to be at six and eleven, that would be an optimal result considering what you're trying to do. And I would, I think. What I'm a firm believer in is you got to find the quarterback and then you just go from there. That is usually how it goes. Like Dallas, they have the quarterback. Now you just try to build a team around that quarterback. That's usually how the NFL operates. So 6th and 11 for the Giants. I think they, um, they're they about two years away from like truly being a playoff team. But again, we got to see who they had. So there's that. So moving on from the Giants, we move to Washington. Now Washington went 7-10 and 10 last year ironically matching the same win total they did the previous year you know before 2021 and in this era of you know ron rivera you're in you're going into the third year with him he's trying to build a decent football program and i like what washington uh did last year you know um minus the fact that you had um you know, you had decent quarterback play out of Taylor Heineke, but I think you could do better there. Um, I like their, I do like their running backs. I like Antonio Gibson a lot. I love Terry McLaurin. I think he's one of the more underrated receivers in the league. You know, Curtis Samuel and him have a nice little duo there. Um, you look at the offensive line. You did see Brandon Sheriff go to Jacksonville, so that doesn't help. Um, but usually they have a solid line defensively is where they make their mark right um you did have chase young on ir which stung you do you do have guys like jonathan allen uh there was named darren Payne, and uh montez sweat i'm just kind of thinking of names that really um come to mind i think they added jamin davis as well but in that draft and you know you look at what they've been building and i think that they have a nice little football program minus of course the nonsense that daniel snyder is doing but i i really felt for the past couple years that washington was the franchise quarterback away from being a solid team right like a good example of this would be the 2018 washington football team where when they got Alex Smith, Alex Smith brought what they haven't had at the position since Kirk Cousins was there, and that is stability, right? Um, the one thing I will say is that Washington letting Kirk Cousins go was a pretty big mistake. I don't give a damn how you view Kirk Cousins, but you kind of have to look at it this way. If you're, a, it, um, you know, obviously you didn't want to pay him because you franchise tagged him a couple times, but. This is the thing, and I always say this, and even this is including my Cowboys, is that don't F around with the quarterback position. If you have a guy that's top 13, top 12 or higher, which I think Kirk Cousins is close to that range, you don't move on from that unless like you feel like you can get someone better or you know you're getting someone better. Like A good example of this was the Colts when they drafted Andrew Luck. Like If you have an opportunity like that, and you're in a situation where it's like, okay, we don't have to pay this guy or we're not tied to the hip, then yeah, you do that. But don't do this other nonsense. But what really killed the Washington football team was the injuries and COVID. That's what really struck them the hardest. So I do expect Washington to be a lot better. They got my guy Jahan Dotson out of Penn State. They added Fedarian Mathis, another person that I really like. Um... Sam Howell is an interesting case because with Sam Howell, you're kind of looking at him and you're saying, okay, like, can you develop him into something? They also added Cole Turner as well. Um, I, I really do love their draft. I think that uh, it's not something that is crazy because when you think about it, okay, you got the quarterback in Carson Wentz who you're hoping can be decent for you. Like, if he is anything like... At, if he's like 60% of what he was, like if he's like 2019 Carson Wentz, 
you got yourself a, a good franchise quarterback. That's how I look at Carson Wentz. I don't think Carson Wentz is trash. I think the problem is is that Carson Wentz is injury prone, number one. But number two, um, the, the worst part about Carson Wentz is that sometimes he the mental fortitude sometimes isn't there. And if I'm going to be real, the one thing that I that's interesting to me is that Carson Wentz, for the first time since 2019, played a, the full season. And I think what really rubbed his tenure, and, and with him with the Colts, I think it was because of what happened that final game. If they had won that game, I guarantee you he's staying in Indy. He had a really solid season. I mean, 27 touchdowns, 7 interceptions. He wasn't like, eye-popping amazing but he was efficient and if you can get that if you get indianapolis carson wentz or hell even like i said 2019 philadelphia eagles carson wentz you got yourself a good quarterback that can at least keep give you stability that's what you're looking for uh you know you look at the rest of this team and I think that they are in a good position. If they can avoid the injury bug and COVID, I think they're getting rid of the, the protocols for testing or whatever the case. I don't know the exact whereabouts of that, but from what I understand, they're not going to test for it unless like you're sick. Um, if we take a look at their schedule, let's take a look at Washington. I think they'll beat Jacksonville. I think they'll beat Detroit. I think they're going to split with Philadelphia. Um... I think they'll split with the Cowboys as well. So there's that. Um, they'll probably lose to a team like Tennessee and Green Bay. They'll beat you know they'll beat Chicago. I'll say they lose to the Colts. Um, yeah, I think they'll lose to the Colts. You have the Miami Dol Miami Dolphins, the Minnesota Vikings. I think Minnesota would beat Washington. Um, then they have the Texans, they have the Falcons, they have San Francisco, they have the Browns, and then they have the Cowboys again. So I actually have Washington at nine and eight, which is good. I mean, like, I think what's really going to be determinant is what happens to, um, like what what exactly are you um you know what what's your status with Carson Wentz right if Carson Wentz is decent or good the Washington Commanders will probably get into the playoffs 9 and 8 can get you to the postseason especially with when you look at the NFC there really isn't any other team maybe the NFC West but I think that you'll probably have, like, two... You could have two playoff teams out of the NFC East. You know, I think a lot of people give the NFC East a lot of crap, but, you know, if we're being real, they aren't... It's not a terrible division. I think it's just more so that the teams beat up on one another. But, yeah, I think Washington is a solid team. They're a quarterback away. Let's figure... Let's see if they have their guy in Carson Wentz. I... I honestly cannot wait to see Carson Wentz play Philadelphia uh, in Philadelphia. That's going to be amazing to watch. I hope that's some primetime stuff. I think that would be hilarious, especially if he beats them and has a really good game. <laughs> but with that being said, I do have the Commanders finishing 9-8. and eight. Um, they'll go. I think they'll go 3-3 three and three in the division probably. But there's that. So moving on from Washington, now we move into the Philadelphia Eagles round of territory when it comes to talking. And I know some Eagles fans will watch this and think I'm going to give them shit, but look at it this way. They had a 4-11-1 record the previous season. That, that's, that 2020 season for Philadelphia was a mess. I mean, Carson Wentz, he's gone. You got a new head coach. And you're kind of just trying to put together something, right? Like usually you're trying to figure out a couple of things. Now, <clears throat> with all that being said, they started 2-5, and five, and it really felt like, okay, this team has no goddamn direction. And I was saying in, uh, in my shows, I think I even said it when we played the Eagles, they need to, know the, they need to run the ball more. Like, it feels like they, 
they are wasting an opportunity, but also they need to be more efficient in the passing game. However, they managed to go on a 7-2 run to make the playoffs. And um, it, it was a really good season for your first year head coach. I think, um, and then they went on into the wild card round and they got ass blasted by Tampa Bay and they tried to make it a little bit more respectable, but you know, listen, you're not, you're not expecting to do a whole lot. I mean, you're the final seed in the playoff. Who cares? You know, <laughs> like, but when you look at what this roster did <clears throat> that year and who they added, um, it really feels like they're just trying to figure out what you know what works, and I, I really think they did a pretty decent job, all things considered. Right? You added a talent in Devonte Smith. You're trying to make it so that your quarterback doesn't have any excuses. And I know that you know some Eagles fans love to talk crap on Dak Prescott. That's fine. That's not what we're here to talk about. But. You know, you got to figure out, do you have the guy at quarterback? Now, there's an indication that they'll probably pay him 35 to $40 million if he has a good year. But again, you got to find your guy, and then you roll with it. We'll see how things go. I, I like Jalen Hurts. You know, I think that he is a great locker room presence, especially with what you got going on in there. However, what I will say is, is that he does have to improve as a passer a little bit more. That's going to be what I'm looking at this go around and keep in mind philadelphia had a boatload of draft capital i mean three first round picks you know in case you're wondering they got one of the picks from miami they got another one from indianapolis and it's just they did their work with it and that was extremely important like they could have sat back and been like you know what that's okay. We'll just go ahead. We'll redo everything, and we'll just draft. No, they they pulled out the big guns this off season. They, in my opinion, had one of the better off seasons this year. Which it's going to be important that they put all these pieces together because there was a lot of moving parts in this, right? So you look at what they brought in. They brought in a Hassan Reddick from Carolina who with him becoming an edge rusher, I think that he's, that's where his home is. That's a fan. And he's, I think he's from, if I remember, he's from Camden, Camden, New Jersey, where, you know, near where I live. But, um, so he's a local guy. He's in on a three year deal. Uh, you brought back Fletcher Cox on a more reasonable contract. You also added James Bradbury, which is a nice addition. Not something eye-popping. I've seen people act like he's the best cornerback in the division. You do have Darius Slay and all those other guys. You do have a lot of options, right? The other thing is you look at the draft. They added Jordan Davis, someone I really liked, along with N'Kobe Dean. You know, they, don't, they didn't have a whole lot of draft selections. They traded a lot of draft capital around. <clears throat> and, you know, kind of looking at the list. Here's their draft. Jordan Davis, Cam Jurgens, N'Kobe Dean, Kyron Johnson, and Grant uh, Cal Katera. Only five players, however, um, who they added with the other bits. They added freaking A.J. Brown to this team. And it, if I'm the Eagles, you're kind of looking at this roster and you're saying you're hoping that you could piece this stuff together because... On paper, you have a really nice team. <clears throat> you look at the schedule. Philadelphia has the Lions. Um, they should be able to beat the Lions. However, the Lions have been a weird team where they've just beaten Philadelphia for some reason. I don't know. They got the, the Vikings in Philly. I'll give the Eagles that. They'll beat Washington at least one. I think they'll uh, Washington and then we'll split. I think they'll beat Jacksonville. They'll beat Arizona. I think they are going to split with the Cowboys. They'll beat the um, the Witch and McCalls. They'll beat the Steelers. They'll beat the Texans. Um, I think they'll lose to a team like the Colts, and um, they'll lose to the Packers. I could see that. 
They'll beat Chicago. Dallas will beat them again, and they'll beat <clears throat> they'll beat the Saints, and I think they'll lose to a team like the Titans. I'm just trying to think that I miss a team. Mm, no, I didn't miss a team. So that puts Philadelphia at 11 and 6. Am I a bit high on Philadelphia? No, I mean, I'm kind of looking at it on paper, like what's the best case scenario. However, I think Philadelphia is a 9 to 11 win team. That That's just me being on. Maybe it's a jinx. I don't know. However, I think that when you look at Philadelphia's schedule, I mean, you, when you look at the entire NFC East schedule, it's easy for everybody. I don't think that's a question there. However, um, Philadelphia has a lot of question marks. If they answer them, they'll be a solid team. However, this can easily go sideways. Jalen Hurts has to continue to develop as a quarterback, and we'll see how that goes about it. I mean, you look at what Jalen Hurts did last season. Uh, apparently, he was like some Pro Bowl alternate, which whatever the hell, I don't give a damn. You look at last season, he had... 3,000 passing yards, 16 touchdowns, 9 interceptions. He didn't really do the best passing the ball. There were moments where he looked solid and good. But rushing the ball, he had 10 total rushing touchdowns, 784 rushing yards. I mean, cool. That's that's good stuff and all. But we're in a passing league. I'm not saying this to discredit him. I mean, when you look at that playoff game, he did not play well at all. So, you know... Phil, he needs to do well in this third year. Um, if if he doesn't, then you're probably going to have to look in a different direction. And they have the draft capital to go get a quarterback. But Jalen Hurts, you got to turn up next year. You got to do better as a passer. If you do that, you're probably going to stay in the Philadelphia Eagles uniform for quite some time. However, uh, right now, um, no. <laughs> Not right now. He, he's still got to prove that. So... Again, I got Philadelphia at 11 and 6. Now we move over to the Dallas Cowboys. Now, I've talked about the Cowboys. I really think that the Cowboys are a team that similar to Philadelphia, they have question marks that we have to answer. Last season, Dallas had a fantastic year. They went 12 and 5. Of course, we all know what happened. They lost in the playoffs against the 49ers in the first round, but they did have a really damn good team. You look at that roster, top to bottom, it was great. I mean, Micah Parsons was the story of the year in the NFL. You also had guys like um, Osa Odegazua that got added in the draft. I mean, the Cowboys didn't really do a whole lot in free agency last year, aside from, you know, hey, you brought back Dak Prescott, you brought in a handful of guys on one-year deals, a couple of which were good. You know, you, got, you added Brian Anger, you added J. Ron Kirsk, you added Malik Hooker. Those are great signings and everything. However, um, this year, it really feels like the Dallas Cowboys didn't even try. Now, why do I say that? They've only, again, I'm not even including the two other guys they signed. They signed three outside free agents. Ryan Nall, the running back out of Chicago, who's a special teamer. James Washington, the wide receiver from Pittsburgh. And Dante Fowler, the defensive end from Atlanta, all for one-year deals. In terms of who they brought back, um, notably Michael Gallup and Brian Anger, as well as Jaron Kirsten, Malik Hooker, and Dorrance Armstrong. I don't really give a damn about the one-year deals for the other players. They did lose a lot, though. <clears throat> they lost Amari Cooper, Malik Turner, and Cedric Wilson to free agency. And that's huge, especially when, you know, when you're changing your wide receiving core as much as you do, that's a big problem. On top of that, their offensive line, they lost two starters in Lyle Collins and Connor Williams. Um, you know, you lost Randy Gregory to Denver. It really did feel like there was a vacuum that was opened and, you know, they're, they're just like, yep, we're just going to let all these people go, so... You look at the draft for Dallas, they, I think, had a solid draft. You added Tyler Smith, Sam Williams, Jalen Tober, who I really like, Jake Ferguson, another person I like, and Matt Wiletsico, all the others, whatever. John Ridgway is a nice one, but again, it, it, it really doesn't feel like Dallas did a whole lot to distance themselves 
Rather, it feels like they're going into a soft rebuild in 2022. Uh, Roster-wise, Dallas has the best quarterback in the division by far, and you can't question that. Where you want to rank him, I don't really give a shit. He's the best quarterback. Can't tell me otherwise. Running backs, they have a nice one-two punch with Zeke and Tony. You kind of look at... And I, the reason I'm going a little bit more in-depth with the Cowboys is because of the fact that, of course, I watch this team. The other ones, I'm just giving you a brief synopsis, and, of course, I want to wrap this shit up. <laughs> so, you know, you look at the wide receivers. Dallas has a fine wide receiving core, not as good as last year's. Tight ends, they did a lateral move there. Offensive line question works we'll see how they do there defensively i think dallas kind of has remained the same they haven't really gotten better in my eyes so it feels like the dallas as a team that's really tied to the hip with how well the talent does through the draft now you look at dallas um right now i got them finishing four and two in the division so how does the rest of their schedule face so i think they'll lose the tampa bay but they'll beat the Bengals. i think they'll start the season one and one um, <clears throat> I think they will lose to the Rams. I think they will beat Detroit and they'll beat Chicago. Um, I'm just trying to think, you know, like uh, there's going to be a BS loss in here and I'm going to give it to them, but y you know what I mean? Um, I think there's going to be a game they win that no one's expecting that happens with Dallas, and I, I'm going to give that win in Green Bay, surprisingly. I think they will beat the Vikings. Then I believe they will beat the Colts. Um, I think they're going to... Uh, beat the Texans they'll have a BS loss I'm probably going to give that one to Chicago I feel like Chicago is going to give them a fit I don't know they'll beat Jacksonville and then they'll turn around and they'll lose to a team like the Titans and they'll finish the year 11 and 6 with that based off of the tiebreakers that gives Dallas the NFC East so that means I have 11 and 6, 11 and 6, 9 and 8 and 6 and 11. That's pretty that's a pretty good year for the division. And I think that if you're the Cowboys, if you get back to the postseason, you win double digit wins, if you get double digit wins, excuse me, that is a win in my book. I think that as a fan of the Cowboys, I would say the biggest thing is you have to get back to the postseason. You got to actually win there. And this is going to be the same thing with Philadelphia. Like you can't Philadelphia has higher expectations than the Cowboys do, which is surprising. So, if Philly disappoints and Dallas somehow meets or exceeds those expectations, oh well, I mean, that's the point of where I'm looking at. Like, a lot of people were picking Philadelphia to win the NFC East. A lot of people were picking Dallas to kind of regress, which I get. And it's hard to go 12-5 and back-to-back -back years. I mean, it's hell. It's hard to win double-digit wins on a consistent basis and then win the playoffs on a consistent basis. Now, that's no excuse for Dallas. It's just that's the truth. So with all that being said, I do have Dallas finishing at 11-6. And, and based off of the opponents, um, I got the tiebreaker going to Dallas based off of according to this common opponents. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, that really kind of says a lot. However... Dallas's big question mark will be your linebacking core, the offensive line, and your wide receivers. If those questions are answered, this Cowboys team will be solid again. And I think this is a big year for Mike McCarthy and company because hey, listen, you gotta you know you gotta do your job, you know. So there's that. Uh, however, I think that the Cowboys will be fine this year. Um, I would say anything that's under. 10 wins like if you're 10 and 7 that's that's meeting my expectations anything under that is a disappointment i mean obviously for all these teams it depends on how things go but that's where it's at so yeah i think that that was a pretty good first podcast so if you did enjoy make sure to like subscribe hit the notification bell if you haven't done so already i'll catch you guys in the next one no doubt and with that next episode, it's probably going to be our Mike Fisher 
spectacular. We'll talk about a lot of things. Um, it's really hard to gather so much information and condense it in the, tw in the tw what, 15 minutes. Hence why it's been taking me a while to do the video. So, we're just going to go ahead. Um, we'll do that in a, a, the second podcast episode. I hope you guys did enjoy this longer version. Um, you know, if you're you know listening to this on the truck and stuff like that, I don't know. But yeah, uh, I will catch you guys in the next one. Have a good one. Goodbye.